Good morning and welcome. My name is Peter Dainoha. I'm from LVM team from Red Hat, but currently I'm working on storage instantiation daemon, uh, or SIT for short, uh, which is a new initiative, a new project, uh, and that's why I would like to introduce you what it is all about, what the goals are, what problems we are trying to solve. Uh, before I start talking about SID itself, uh, I would like to talk a little bit about some background, which is important for us to get to why we started SID at all. So uh, it's about U events in UDA. So just to recap, uh, what are U events? Uh, we have kernel space, user space, and we need, need to uh, have user space know about some changes that are happening in kernel to a device. It's either uh, device addition and removal, change, uh, renaming a device, and something like that. So we have an outlink interface for that, uh, where we send U events. These are so-called <coughs> kernel U events. They are multicast, so we have several receivers in user space. Uh, when it comes to where, who provokes this U event, it could be the kernel itself, or it could be the user space as well. And this is done through the U event file, which you can find in the SysFS. Uh, uh, file system. It's also possible to send U events uh, between two processes in user space and also to send uh, U events uh, uh, before uh, the, the, the yellow one, uh, that's the unicast way, and the green one, uh, we can also send multicast uh, in user space. Uh, we'll see how it is used. So, as I said, U events are even notifications. Uh, we have three basic types, kernel, user space, uh, uh, and user space multicast and unicast. Each U event comes with uh, some environment, uh, which is in a key value pair that tells you more about the context, what's, uh, what the U event is about, what it, what it is uh, notifying you about, or any other information you need to do to process this notification, this message in user space. Uh, we have a do even action types. Uh, this is actually telling you uh, what you're being notified basically about. Uh, so it's the device addition, removal, change, or move. Uh, this is one of the, actually one of the key value pairs, one of the basic key value pairs. And as you have seen, all netlinks, all, all events are going through the netlink socket. Then we have UDAV. UDAV is uh, UDAV daemon, which is the primary listener of these U events in user space. And uh, it's, it uses that information to support dynamic device management. So what does this mean? It means it monitors the Netlink socket for kernel U events. It processes UDAV rules. I just mentioned all the possibilities you can do with the UDAV rules here for reference. But what it all boils down to is that you need to set device node permissions and create some links to these device node, the nodes under slash dev. That's what primarily UDAV daemon was designed for. Um, then it stores records in UDAV database, which means all the key value pairs that uh, came with the kernel U event, as well as all the key value pairs that you might have added while executing UDAV rules. And then it regenerates uh, these uh, kernel events as so-called UDEV events, which are actually kernel events plus all the uh, context you have added while executing the UDEV rules. And others are able to monitor, and they can choose whether they listen either to raw kernel events or those enriched uh, UDEV events. So let's see this in picture in action. Uh, we have Netlink interface, uh, the U event file, uh, you have UDAV, UDAV daemon, which is one of the mm, primary listeners uh, in user space for these events. There could be other listeners, of course. Uh, there's UDAV worker running uh, when uh, the new event comes. Uh, it just resends uh, the, uh, the uh, notification from uh, the main daemon to the worker. Uh, it runs UDAV rules, which include built-in commands, external commands, uh, writes the UDEV database and regenerates the UDEV event. So there are also uh, user space listeners who can listen to that. So that's the basic uh, UDEV in action. Now, let's talk more about storage. Uh, there are some specifics when we are trying to deal with storage. And uh, this is the, the ideal, uh, <coughs> the ideal scenario is that when you have a single device uh, which is usable just right after the ad event. It happens, it's fine, it's great when it happens, but usually that's not the reality. The reality when you're dealing with storage 
and all the uh, various uh, storage virtualization uh, schemes like device mapper MD and so on usually have more actions to perform when the device is usable. It's, it's simply not right after the add event. So the add event doesn't tell you that the device is usable. You need to perform some initialization sequence, for example, in some cases that might include zeroing the data area of newly created device or uh, adding some signatures to the device and so on. Then there's multi-step activation scheme. For example, in case of uh, device mapper, you have your uh, device added to the kernel. The representation is added to, to the kernel, but it's just a dump device. It doesn't actually do anything. You can't perform any IO on that device. You need to load some configuration to that. That's, for example, the device mapper table, and then you make that configuration available. So that's three actions, and it doesn't map to add event. So after the add event, you just have the device which is not usable. That's important to know. So simply, you need to tackle this in, in UDEV somehow. And then we have grouping and layering. These two are actually related together, because uh, when you're dealing with uh, storage virtualization techniques, uh, you group several devices together. And when you group these devices together, you actually want to create a new layer on top of this, this group of devices to represent this group. So grouping and layering together actually you create stacking. And uh, when you're dealing with storage, you can stack devices uh, arbitrarily, which means you can go iteratively and stack one layer on top of another. Uh, so how we do this usually, it's uh, that devices contain signatures, uh, I mean, the storage device itself contains signatures, metadata, or it can be external configuration uh, that define the next layer in the stack. Uh, what we use for that is block ID. That's the very basic scan we currently perform in, uh, within UDEV rules. Uh, this is only used uh, for signatures that are or metadata, which is directly stored on disk. Then we have multipath. Uh, we need to consult multipath to detect multipath components because this is external configuration. Multipath doesn't have any, uh, any signatures or metadata attached directly to disk, or it might be detached header location, just like uh, Andra mentioned uh, before for locks encrypted devices and any other specialties for storage specifics. Okay, so on one hand, we have UDEV and UEvents. Uh, and on the other hand, we have uh, all these storage specifics. And this brings us to a clash. And there, there are some problems uh, we need to deal with. So over the years, uh, when we've been dealing with the UDEV and, and storage, we've run into certain issues. So I just collected a few of them. It might be the overall of the UEvent action type. Uh, as I said, we have eight UEvent uh, action types, but four of them are actually usable or used uh, uh, frequently for storage. That's add, change, remove, and move. So add, remove, and move are quite clear because they, are, they notify you about device addition, removal, or rename. But then you're left with one change even to notify about all the other changes. So what you need to do, uh, you need to add just more context to the environment, to the even environment, the key value pairs. And that's sometimes a problem. Uh, this, why, <coughs> this is quite clear because uh, when you're trying to react to U events in UDEV rule language, UDEV rule language is simply not a, a general purpose language. So it's restricted. You can't do everything what you need. That brings us to next, uh, uh, next item, which is that you need to ex ex actually call external commands to perform some uh, extra action because that UDEV rule language is restricted. And uh, there are other things like uh, the rules and keys are global. Uh, you, can, you can install uh, UDEV rules from various sources. They may overwrite uh, each uh, values. Uh, and there's simply no, no order in, in this. And it's just about how those teams uh, uh, communicate together, whether this works well. Uh, then, of course, sometimes you need to access UDEV database directly from within UDEV rules. This is not quite easy. We have a UDEV rule for that, which is import db UDEV rule, but uh, uh, it's clunky and error prone. 
this brings us to another problem, which is identification of current state. Uh, because if you don't have enough information, you have problems with identifying in what state the device is, what you need to do currently on that device based on the notification you just received. And there's completely direct, no direct support for grouping. Uh, all UDEV does is that it uh, execute actions per device. You get notifications per device. You don't have any abstraction on top of that in the form of grouping. And that's what we said we actually need for storage virtualization techniques when we are dealing with storage. There's also no standard way uh, on marking device as ready, usable, public, private, temporarily private. Uh, we use that, but everybody use its own way. There's uh, maybe uh, those of you who, who uh, looked into EDEV rules, there's systemd ready, that's DM activation, and various uh, keys that you need to know about when the device is ready and usable. And also work done within the UDEV context, context may not be appropriate uh, because you perform lots of actions just to know in what state you are, you, you need to call external tools. And that brings us to another problem. You, you're just running, uh, you need to complete all, all your actions within certain timeout because UDEV has a timeout for all its actions, for all its UDEV root processing. And if you hit the timeout, uh, you don't just kills the worker and you don't have any fallback action uh, which you can perform. So simply you, you just lost the notification, you lost the state and it makes it very hard then for the next event you receive uh, to just uh, uh, make it working again. And <coughs> then it's also about scheduling separate work. So even if you, if you would like to make uh, uh, the work as minimal uh, as possible within UDEV context and you want to do some delayed actions, then you need to have a way to schedule these actions and to synchronize with them somehow. So simply, UDEV is not primarily designed for this. Uh, it's, as I said, it's designed to handle nodes and symlinks and slash dev does that just fine, but we need a different approach for storage for our needs. So how uh, that does that look like? Let's look at our picture again. This is the usual uh, sequence of what happens when you receive a U event. So we need a change in this area to minimize uh, UDEV rule processing and to try uh, uh, to make this much more straightforward for us to recognize the state, to, to react to events and so on. We need, we need to change this part as well because uh, we need to be able to uh, do uh, delay work. So we need to listen for these uh, U events. And actually this part as well. So what these changes are. Uh, that's uh, the sit daemon, new sit daemon sitting on top. And there's the sit uh, built-in UDEV. Uh, UDEV built-in command, which communicates with SID when it receives the event. It returns some information back, and also SID uh, listens for uh, these uh, UDEV events as well. We'll see why. And then this part also needs needed some change. Uh, it actually is already uh, in kernel since 4.13. Uh, and basically it's about adding uh, a possibility to define uh, more keys when you when you synthesize the U event when you when you provoke that U event from user space. Before it was just possible to create a U event with a certain action, but you couldn't define any more key value pairs that you needed. So uh, let's look at the storage instantiation daemon and its co components. So it's this SID daemon uh, which is layered on top of UDAV. Uh, it keeps its own database, uh, we'll see that too. Uh, it executes storage specific event handling and processing. We also see uh, how it does that. Uh, then we have the UDEV built-in command. It's uh, just the bridge between uh, UDEV and, and SID. And for the future, of course, there's the library interface that we might uh, use to access SID uh, database and SID CDL command line interface. So, Let's look at the uh, SID and its, uh, and its uh, which I call 
stages uh, of processing. Uh, that's the identify when it, when UDAP rules are executed. That's the SID uh, UDAP built-in command, which uh, creates a bridge between UDAP and SID, and it calls SID identify UDAP built-in command. So this is this is the upper part of the picture we've seen before. That's the UDAP debugger. I just uh, cut the the other half because it's not important here. So we have the SID identify uh, that uh, actually. Uh, creates a SIT worker with its own SIT database snapshot. This is important because you're working with a database snapshot, so we have a consistent view on the state. Uh, and then it executes stage A. We'll see what it is, actually. And then it returns uh, the results back. And then we have SIT checkpoint at the end of UWD worker processing, uh, which causes the uh, SIT database uh, to get synced with the master database. Yep, that's here. And then it, uh, uh, we receive the UDEV even after the UDEV worker is finished. And that executes then stage B, which, is, uh, which contains all the delayed actions we have uh, scheduled. So let's look at the identify, uh, SID, uh, identify stage A. That's the First part, I also call that a UDAV, UDAV uh, stage just because it runs uh, as, uh, uh, at the same time uh, when, when UDAV debugger is uh, running. So we are actually processing that U event at that moment. So it's stage A. We're starting at the idle state, which means that it hasn't it is not doing anything. It hasn't received any notification yet. When we receive the notification, uh, we are in the initialization state, which uh, means we, we need to perform some initialization of, or uh, access the database, set up some, some values. This is, this is actually mm, belonging to the core part. Then we have the identification phase, which identifies uh, the device. What type of device is it? And it's uh, separated on, on at block and type uh, phase. Uh, the block and type, I need to uh, explain that a little bit. The block is executed always, no matter what the type is. And the type is only executed when for certain types. The green parts are actually uh, the module hooks that you can define to uh, handle uh, these notifications. Then we have uh, another meta state, which is scan all, which is separate further into scan pre. Again, block type that is before you start any scanning or accessing the device. So we can make decisions here. Then you have scanning. This is the core part of the scanning uh, for current layer, which is again block and type, and next layer, block and type. Now I need to explain the current and next. Uh, <coughs> Imagine you have, you have a stack of devices, and you're just processing right now a current device for which you have just received the U event. So that's the current. And then you have next, which is just right uh, on, top of, uh, on top of that device. So that's what's going to be activated next. That's what you're expecting next. And that's actually a sliding window. So you're just sliding through that stack with the current next. So what this next, what next now is next time is the current and so on, so you're sliding window. And then you have scan post meta state. Again, current uh, for current uh, uh, layer, block and type uh, module hook, and next uh, block and type module hooks. In scan post, you simply schedule your delayed actions or you schedule what uh, symlinks you that should create or anything you need to return back to you that so and um, this is just going round and round so you have clear states uh, going from one to another and actually what you can do you can map you rules to these uh, to these states so with UDEV rules, you actually don't have any order defined. Anyone can just insert uh, UDEV rules in any order. Uh, but with this type, uh, you have the identification state. You have pre-scan, scan, and after scan. And 
that's uh, when, when you return the results back to UDA when you schedule your actions, and then when UDA, the worker is finished, uh, then uh, SIT receives uh, the information from UDEV, the notification, the UDEV, the, uh, the UDEV uh, U-event actually, and that starts the stage B. And stage B, again, starts with idle, and it's just performing actions for current and next layer. So that's, that's the stage B, and maybe a little bit about the database, just uh, briefly, it's a key value database with various backends. That's what you have available when you're defining uh, SID modules. They are, can be either simple or vector types. Uh, as we've seen, it's the, there is a snapshot separation, so you have, uh, so you have uh, a consistent view on the state, on the database state. It also supports uh, delta synchronization of vector values. What does this mean is that you don't need to synchronize all the vector, but just uh, the deltas. Uh, the vectors, uh, vector values are actually the array of values you need to store. And so SID does that for you. You have separate key namespaces, uh, so-called UDEV namespace, which maps to UDEV. So whatever you read from UDEV namespace is actually what you would read in UDEV rules, and which, whatever you write to UDEV namespace will end up uh, written uh, to UDEV database uh, uh, at the end of stage A. Then we have global, and that's the difference. That These are the additions uh, when you compare that to UDEV uh, module uh, namespace and device namespace. Uh, so you can separate your database records into these uh, based on what you need to do. And then there are per module protection flags. That's also important because you can have your values protected. So another modules won't overwrite your values. This isn't possible with UDEV, which sometimes cause problems. You can make that even private, and you can make that reserved. So for example, if you have a module which you know that is going to write certain value, you can reserve that key, and no other module is going to overwrite that. So this, this, is, this is the protection that SID adds. So these are the enhancements uh, on top of UDA we, we actually used to, to handle storage and where we can define modules in a, in a much more straightforward way. And yeah, that's then uh, you can make uh, your records persistent, which means that they are actually getting synced with the uh, master record uh, in the SID database for next use. You can also use temporary values if you need to, but uh, it makes sense to make them persistent. Okay, so that was about database and that's, that's probably it. Uh, so it was just a brief overview of what this project is about, what it is trying to do and what problems it uh, tries to deal with. So if you have any questions, please ask. Yep. Uh, the stage A is written. Uh, there's a GitHub page. Uh, uh, it's at the end of these slides. I'm currently working on stage B. So it's still uh, under development. Yep. Is it intended to be used for all storage devices, or will there still be some that will be natively processed by UDEV? Like you said, it's good for certain things. My, my ultimate goal is this to be usable for all storage. So if there are any other <coughs> specifics that we need to deal with, and <coughs> if there are any uh, storage developers here, please consult that with me. I would like to make that Ultimately, I would like to make, make this central for all storage. And ultimately, what I would like UDEV to do, the only thing to do is to create those symlinks and everything else to uh, be here. So that would be a central storage. And the game from the here, this would be that, as you have seen, there's the SID database. And the SID database keeps the storage stack, how it looks like. And if you have uh, the uh, library interface, you could access this information. You could have, for example, notifications like, please let me know when this group of devices is complete. So it's just enhancing how uh, the notifications happen. It's uh, adding more structure to that. So it's layer on top of it. So yes, ultimately, you'd have just creating symlinks and all the storage handled here. 
by modules. Yep. Do, do you store in the database uh, the different aliases, symlinks, which we create? Uh, we already have that in UDEV database, so I don't need to that. I have access uh, to that database by the UDEV namespace. So uh, you, you don't need to uh, think about this because it's already uh, imported automatically by SIP for you. So you can access everything what you can access in UDEV rules, but there's the extra uh, namespaces that you can use as well. UDEV is one of them, so yep. So a set will handle a number of prickly cases with storage stacks that yes, like uh, I can think of two examples. Number one is if you have a RAID device or something, you're gathering up the different ones and maybe one of them is missing. There's got to be a timeout or something uh, before you give up and say that device is dead. I'm going to boot up anyway in a resilient mode without that redundancy. That's one thing that it, that it would probably handle better than you that by far. Yep. Number two is like, a multi-path issue. If you're starting up for the first time, you might see the first path and just grab it without noticing the other paths and then setting up the multi-path layer. This could reverse that back down and stack in the multi-path layer then too. Huh? Would it solve both? Sure. Like sure. Uh, as for the first one, uh, uh, like uh, waiting, waiting uh, for completeness of certain group of devices, that's actually the stage B where we can schedule some timeout and waiting uh, loop. Uh, of course, uh, that could be configured. That's still work to do because I'm just working on the stage B, but uh, yes, that's going to be supported. And uh, the second one, the multi-path, uh, yes, yes. Uh, actually, that's, that's the very first module that uh, I have written in together with uh, Ben Marzinski, uh, who is dealing with uh, multi-path. And uh, he created a library for me, so well, I just get that information from Multipath, and and uh, I, I know that this certain device is uh, configured as Multipath component, so I know that it can be used. I can mark that device as, please don't use that device, don't uh, do any any write to that, or simply marking that in a standard way. So yes, this is, this is a plus uh, when you compare that to UDEV that uh, you, can, you can create a library, libraries to access uh, from module. Uh, the modules can use libraries to access this information. With UDEV rules, you could just run the external command. So it's just uh, narrowing down uh, the possibility of timeouts happening. So yes, these two are handled. And we are over here, so thank you very much. Yeah. Any other question we need to be Okay, if you need any information that's here, I can find out. Okay.